And top on the brief this morning is River State. It appears that things will get worse before they get better in that part of the country as two security operatives, uh, one security man and another youth, have lost their lives in Omuma local government area following the tension generated by the tenure of local government chairman in the state. Confirming the incident, spokesperson of the State Police Command, Grace Iringe Koko, said the victims are one policeman and a vigilante operative. Earlier in the day, the Governor Simlai Fubara directed heads of administration in the 23 local government areas to take over from the elected council chairman, whose three-year tenure elapsed on Monday. In the meantime, there was palpable fear in the state earlier on Tuesday as Ijo youths occupied some local government areas in the state to prevent the chairman, whose tenure expired yesterday, from gaining access into their offices. The youths were seen seated around multiple canopies, chanting, dancing, and waving the Ijo Youth Congress flags with the presence of heavy security men uh, who were monitoring the situation. We are here in solidarity with democracy. We are law-abiding citizens. We are a job people. We stand for justice, we stand for peace, and we stand for equity. What is happening today is an aberration to democracy. It is against democracy. It is against democratic practice in Nigeria. The past local government chairman took hold of office that after three years they would take a bow and leave. For them to stay more than three years and aberration to, to, to the practice of democracy, these are people we supported too. I am not from Nasarawa State. I am from River State. I am from Bobo local government. The jobs you're seeing here are from River State and they belong to each of the different local governments. Yeah, we voted yeah. for these people. Yeah. We voted for these people. It is three years we voted for them. Are they saying they don't want to leave council? Are they the only reverse people? We say after 17th of June, they should take a bar and leave. Yes. What we are doing is our civil rights to protest, to say it's a peaceful protest. Nobody's carrying arms against it. I stop! Yeah. I stop! Yeah. I stop! Police, police is doing their job. We are here to say, local government chairman, thank you. You have governed your local government council for three years. Please peacefully take a walk and leave while the government and the electoral body will prepare for fresh election. What we are doing today is our civil rights to say peacefully we don't want anarchy in River State. We don't want distraction. We don't want commotion in River State. The government, the government of River State is a peace-loving man. And amid the continuing tension in River State, the bust statue of the FCT minister and former governor of River State, Mr. Yesam Wike, has been destroyed by some irate youths who stormed the Obiapo Council headquarters earlier on Tuesday. One of the youths who uh, were, was visibly angry and speaking in a mix of the Ikwere dialect and English pulled the statue down while the others cheered him on. The youths who had invaded the council headquarters claimed they were there to ensure the safety of council property following the expiration of the chairman's tenure. Mr. Yes Wike, who is a former chairman of Obiako and has been involved in a political feud with his former protege, the governor of the state, Simlai Fubara. And away from River State now, the Fuani brothers who were whisked away in their boat by unknown gunmen in Lagos on June the 14th have been rescued. Five victims in total, three Lebanese, the boat captain and his assistant, were rescued in Orubo Ido area in a local government area of Lagos State. The state police spokesperson, Mr. Benjamin Houdini, explains that the victims were rescued late on Monday night by Marine Police with the support of the Nigerian Navy and have been returned to their homes safely. Safely. Mr. Hudei adds that police cannot immediately verify if any ransom was paid, but says no suspect has been apprehended in connection with the kidnap. And more on security this morning in Kaduna State, to be precise, where at least six persons have been reportedly killed and scores of others abducted by bandits who attacked Bauda and Chibia communities of Maro Ward in Kajuru, local government area of the state. The bandits were said to have stormed the two villages on Monday afternoon and unleashed terror 
killing six persons and later they abducted an unspecified number of people. Several others also sustained varying degrees of injuries. Police authorities in Kaduna State are yet to comment on the incident, but the executive chairman of Kajuru local government area, Mr. Ibrahim Gajeri, in a statement, confirmed the invasion of the communities by the bandits who came on motorcycles in large numbers. And in the meantime, the state governor, Mr. Obasani, says the military will soon establish two new forward operating bases in the southern area in, and in Berlinguari as part of efforts to curb the menace of banditry, kidnapping and other related security threats. Governor Sani, who gave the hint during a meeting with the Elders Forum in his office, explains that the new military bases will enhance security in the frontline locations to enable farmers have access to their lands. And military personnel maintaining law and order across various areas of operations have been commended for their courage and love for the country in the face of security challenges. This was contained in a message by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja, to troops of Operation Safe Haven and personnel of three division at the headquarters of Operation Safe Haven in Jos, Plateau State, to celebrate the Idel Kabir. He was represented at the event. As an army, it has been a year of unquantifiable sacrifice in blood and treasure as we have lost gallant warriors and precious equipment in our ongoing fight against insurgency, terrorism, banditry, secessionist agitations and oil-related economic crimes amongst others. Our personnel have displayed uncommon courage and faith in our dear country in the face of grave danger. And like the good soldiers that they are, come out victorious for our nation. Many bear the badge of courage and bravery in the form of battle scars and deformities, while others are lucky to only have memories and stories to tell of their sacrifice to our beloved country. In it all, we remain resolute in winning all land battles against our nation's adversaries, both internal and external. And from the FCT this time, President of the Senate, Senator Godfrey Lakwabiu, says Nigeria might not be experiencing banditry today if the country had not changed its anthem in 1978. He made this remark during a visit to the Nigeria Institute of Legislative and Democratic Studies, NILDS. Senator Akwabiu highlighted the recent national anthem bill as one of the 10th Assembly's most appealing pieces of legislation. He also mentioned the student's loan bill as another significant significant one passed by the assembly. And more from the FCT, as the federal government has announced a $3.5 billion agreement with Afrexim Bank to enhance the textile industry and promote the use of compressed natural gas vehicles, among other initiatives. The Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment, Mrs. Doris Uzoka Anite, made this disclosure in a statement on X on Tuesday. Uzoka Anite said the deal was signed with the International Financial Institution during the 31st Afrexim Bank meeting in Nassau, the Bahamas. And outside our shores, President Joe Biden has announced a new policy that would protect hundreds of thousands of undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens from deportation. This is according to administration officials. The issue of immigration has proven an election year headache for Mr. Biden, who recently issued a sweeping executive action to curb record migrant arrivals at the U.S.-Mexico border. The new policy will apply to those who have been in the country for at least 10 years and will allow them to work work in the U.S. Ill illegally, not illegally, to work in the U.S. legally. The White House, the White House believes more than 500,000 spouses will be eligible. 
And there's a cherry one in sports as world record holder in the women's 100 meters hurdles, Tobia Mushon, claimed her fourth Nigerian title at the ongoing Athletics Federation of Nigeria's national trials at the Samuel Ugwemudia Stadium in Benin City on Monday. She powered through to the finish line at a time of 12.78 seconds ahead of Adobe Tabubo, who finished second in 13.33 seconds. The event, which ends on which ended on Tuesday, will be used by the EFN to pick athletes for the Paris Olympics, the Africa Championships to be held later this month in Cameroon, and the World Under 20 Championship in Lima, Peru, from August the 27th to the 31st. Although Amouchon had qualified for the Olympics, she executed her race smoothly in Benin City to defend her title. And there's no stopping Amusha as she continues to do Nigeria proud, uh, not just at home, but also internationally. But what are some of your thoughts to the big stories? Uh, Karadi joins me now for a review. Yes, Hello again, Karadi. Hi, we're racing through uh, all of your reactions. 